Hi hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. My name is Abraham Leal and today I'm really happy to announce that we have just released our newest course, the Hard Surface course for Maya. So yeah, this is it. This is the Hard Surface one. We've been working on this one for the past uh, month, month and a half probably, and uh, it's now out. So I'm really, really happy to present. Let me hide the guides real quick. Let's show the guys, there we go. So this is the thumbnail image and this one actually contains all of the objects that we're gonna be modeling throughout the course. So we're gonna be doing the basic can in chapter one and then we're gonna do the toaster and then we're gonna do the GameCube controller and then we're gonna do the camera and finally we're gonna do this very nice cool looking chainsaw. So this is a really fun course. I had a lot of fun uh, recording it. It's I believe like 17 or almost 18 hours of content. Again, no time skips, no uh, like turntables, no nothing. We, we show you every single step throughout the throughout the process and it's quite a nice one I, I think you guys are gonna really enjoy it even if you are already like familiarized with like traditional modeling there are several concepts tips tricks and things that are really really handy I think and uh, yes we do have our promo code going on so for the next three days in the same way that we had with our blender course for the next three days we're gonna have a massive discount in the sites down here I know some of you are waiting for other sites to be up we're working on everything but right now the ones that are here in the comments are the ones that are available so make sure go make sure to go there and if you want to grab this course use the promo code that's going to be in there so that you get a very very cool discount I really like this course I always try to deliver the best possible content for you guys so that you can uh, learn improve grow as artists and eventually create amazing amazing things in the in the industry and I particularly like this one because especially for the last two projects like the like the camera and the chainsaw it really felt like I was teaching a class. Uh, normally, you know, when, when you're recording things, it, they sometimes seem a little bit too like robotic, like you're just going through the motions and, and showing people how to do things. But in this one, there was a lot of like going back and forth, like finding the best possible ways, trying one thing or the other to make sure that the shapes were looking the best possible um, that they could. So I, I really had a lot of fun because it, it really felt, even though I know you guys weren't there with me, um, not yet because you're gonna see the videos, right? But it really felt like we were in a, like a conversation. So hopefully you guys are gonna enjoy that. But that's, that's not it. Um, I actually want to use this video to show you a little bit about the things that we're going to be talking to uh, or about in the, in the course. There's actually one more exercise that I wanted to add, but we didn't have time. That's why I have Maya open right here uh, because I want to do it right now. And that is a key, like a normal key. Very simple. I wanted to include it in chapter one, but then the videos were going to be a little bit too long. So let's do it. Let's do it real quick. Let's set our project here. And if you're staying after the initial intro, thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the support. All of the support really, really helps us. We're gonna go image planes and I should have one right over here. Where is it? I don't even remember how I saved it, but I did save it. <laughs> should be, there we go, screenshot, perfect. So this is a normal key, right? And it might seem like it's not much, right? It's like, yeah, it's just the key, so what? Uh, but actually we can learn a lot of cool things about the topology and how to handle this because there's a couple of details that are gonna be a little bit like tricky to do. Now, the first thing you might think is, well, this looks kind of like a symmetrical thing, right? Except for the fact that it has this groove right here and the shape of the key is a little bit different. But that doesn't mean that we can't utilize the basics of, uh, of modeling to create this shape right here. So there's a ton of different ways to do it. I'm gonna start with a plane. I'm gonna rotate this plane 90 degrees so that it's facing me. Let's see what this guy's out, there we go. And I'm gonna reduce the divisions to one. Okay, there we go. Now, one of the things, and we've talked about this in the channel that we really, really need to focus on is topology, right? Like we wanna make sure that things flow in a very like nice and, and easy to follow way. And if you saw the how to study topology video that we uploaded a couple of, um, I think that was last week, um, I mentioned that one thing that you can do is, of course, to, to draw a couple of lines in front of your object inside of Photoshop, for instance, and just like, like create something, right? So for instance, I know that for this shapes right here, we're gonna need some sort of like, like road going in, right? Like following this direction. Then once we hit this place, we're probably gonna need something to go around the key like this. 
So see how I'm following because I want to make sure that there's an edge loop. Edge loops are one of the most critical things that we have inside of our uh, of our like arsenal uh, for hard surface because they're going to allow us to control the flow of topology and make sure that the shapes hold very nicely when we subdivide. All of the things, this is a, a little bit of an information. So, someone actually asked about this in, in one of the comments. All of the things that we're going to be seeing on the, on the course, on the hard surface course, have to do with subdivision modeling. So we're not going to be doing this for games or for like real time rendering this is meant to be for um like film so when you're going to be using uh subdivision models and stuff so there we go now for instance here we might also need a couple of extra loops here and we just keep going whenever you see a curve you usually want to have at least three lines on the curve and that's going to give you like a soft soft transition here i'm using shift to relax a little bit and there we go so now i know that like for instance from here we're just gonna go down. And now we have this other indentation. See, see this nice little like engraving thing that we have? If you see something that changes the form of the object, you usually wanna have an edge loop that goes around. So let's just add another edge loop here. And you can see how we can start like bridging all of this uh, like concepts together and creating a very, very nice soft uh, transition. I'm not gonna worry about the group right now, like this group that we are gonna use to eventually open the, the door or whatever. Uh, and now let's just start like closing the holes all the way over here. So if this seems a little bit too complicated, like you don't really know why I'm doing this, why am I following this specific order? Fear not, that's exactly why we uh, created the course, the hard surface one that we're promoting right now, because over in that course we go like really, really in depth about like the reasons why we, we follow the ways or we, we create this sort of like um, yeah, movements in the way that we're doing it right now. So for instance, see this one right here? We just talked about this, right? Like whenever we have like a curve, you usually want three points. That's that's an important concept that we use quite a bit inside of the tutorial. And then we do this, and then let's do this. And now here I need to decide, do I want this thing to flow into the corner or into the border, or do I want to flow it into itself? And I actually want it to flow towards the border. So we're gonna create a new border right here. And if we need to recreate the topology here, we just do. Now, this is a simple object. This is very similar to, to like the toaster. Um, the toaster is level one. I actually created the chapters in sort of like a game fashion. So the first level, which is the can, the soda can, that one's fairly easy. Everyone, even if you're just like a complete beginner to the, to the 3D world, you should be able to do it. And then the toaster is a little bit more difficult. The game controller, a little bit more difficult. The camera actually turned out to be like the final boss before the, <laughs> before the chainsaw because the camera is really, really complex. It has a lot of like little, little things here and there that made it uh, quite challenging to model. Uh, but every single step is there, so so we're not gonna skip um, anything. There we go. So now I'm just gonna grab a couple of the vertices here that I wanna clean up, like this ones right here that I know they're completely straight. Uh, like this ones right here, let's let's try and fix them so they look as nice as possible. And we just need to completely bridge this thing right here. You usually wanna keep uh, quads and triangles whenever uh, possible. So for instance here, I'd rather have just like one extra quad right over there rather than have uh, like a weird section. Let's move a little bit over there. And perfect. Now, of course, we need to fill all of this in, right? Like all of this area, even though we're going to do a little bit of an indentation, we do want to fill it in. So I am just going to, again, use my uh, quadro here and let's start like bridging. Let's move this thing here for a second. And actually, let's, let's do one there and then two, three. Uh, here, I'm going to add one more line again, just to keep things as like uniform as possible. So let's go like there. Here's where things are gonna get slightly tricky because we're gonna have to start like fixing. The, I, I always like to say the topology is like a, like a puzzle, right? So you, you need to build the puzzle and, and you're gonna have to, to find the best possible way or the best way to, to create this. There we go, so that looks quite nice. And uh, one, one thing that I do mention during the course is that a topology and modeling, is, it's, it's like making a, a scrambled eggs, right? Everyone has a, a way of doing them. Uh, and there's no like, like I mean, there, there's like a correct or, or better way to do them. Uh, but as long as they're like looking nice, it's fine. Like if you give this model to every single 3D artist, everyone's gonna do something slightly different. But as long as you follow the principles and the rules of 3D modeling, you're gonna be just fine. So this, uh, what I'm gonna do, of course, is I'm gonna do a mirror on the uh, world mode, uh, X negative, there we go. And then I'm gonna grab this edge loop right here, control E and extrude them all the way down like that. And then grab this vertices right here, 
and just start like moving them down. So all of those, all of those, all of those, all of those, those, and then this ones we keep moving forward or backwards in this case. And there we go. So now we have the key. Uh, well, it seems like we forgot to bridge over here. Let's just do a quick bridge. And then I'm gonna collapse. So I'm gonna select this three, one, two, and three, and we're gonna collapse. There we go. Now, uh, when we extrude, of course, control E and push this forward a little bit, uh, we're gonna get exactly what we want, right? We're still missing the, the backside of the object, of course. Uh, we're gonna do something about it, but I wanna do this like nice little indentation first. So let's go to the front view. Well, actually, let's go to the side view first. And I'm gonna delete all of the back faces. So now my key is supposed to be hollow. Oh, it's not. Let's delete those edge loops, this edge loops, this edge loops, and this edge loops. There we go. So now my key is hollow, as you can see right there. And that should allow me to go to the front view, grab all of these faces right here, make sure we deselect the ones that we don't need. And you can see that it's like a little bit deeper down here than it is up here. So I'm going to show you a really quick trick. So if you've been holding on until now, you're about to get something cool. So I'm going to push this in like about there. And then I'm going to go to move and I'm going to move the pivot point of this selection like up here. And if I rotate this back, see how I'm pushing this things like down there a little bit more. So now when we do uh, smooth, the, the bottom part there is going to be a little bit deeper than the, than the upper one. So that's gonna give us a nice effect. Uh, now we can talk about the indentation right there because we're gonna need it before we do the um, the bridge or the mirror to the to the other side. So I can definitely say or uh, tell that the indentation is this phase right here and it goes all the way up until we hit this phase right here, right? So until we get even like all the way over here, there's a little bit of an indentation there. So I'm gonna control E, push this back and then with my scale, I'm going to scale it so that it's completely flat. And then we're going to do something very similar. We're going to grab that face that we just extruded. And we're going to push it uh, up like this. Now you can see that there's a little bit of a weird edge right here. This one that's like mirrored. So I'm just going to push this up a little bit. And that's going to give us a nicer effect. There we go. Um, now it's time to add some, some bevels. Now I just want to make sure that the vertices of that line that I just extruded are not going like further back. So I'm going to grab the outer edge here and like this outer edges here. Oh, this ones and let's push them just a little bit back. So the thickness of the key is bigger than the, than the hole that we just created. There we go. And before we do the mirror, I like to do some bevels so that we can save a little bit of time. So I'm going to select all of this guys and then all of this border. Uh, well, actually, of course, we're going to delete this face. We don't need it. And this face as well. Yeah, we're probably going to need to add like one edge loop right there. Grab these two vertices, merge together, merge together, and then bridge. There we go. So now when we finish the whole thing, uh, everything should be looking nice. So again, we grab the border all of the outer borders of this things right here, even like this guy right here. And then the outer border of this like group that we have right there. Perfect. And usually when you have a, a bevel, you want to grab like every single like, like you want to close the loop so that you can you don't get any angles. And then we're going to bevel. And let's see if it works. I don't think it worked. Did it work? No, it did not work. Sometimes when this doesn't work it's because the edges are like super, super close together. So let's do it in, in sections. Let's try doing like a, this thing. There we go. That that looks like a like a good way. And then we just bevel. There we go. So now as you can see that bevel works a little bit better. Two segments. So when we smooth, we get like a really, really sharp effect. There we go. And now I'm going to add uh, some uh, support edges on this area right here. However, we have a little bit of an issue. If I were to add one support edge right here, you're going to see that it stops right there. And that's not something that we want. And the reason why it's stopping is because there's some sort of like uh, angle over there. In this case, it's not going to be that much of a problem. I'm just going to grab these two vertices, merge to center, and merge to center those two guys. 
it's going to create like a little bit of a, of a hook. You can see that. So it's going to be like a smooth transition over there. That looks a lot better. But I do want to keep going over here. Now, see, that's the angle right there. So let's go with our nice little tool here and go from there to there. And go from there to there. That way we shouldn't have any angles. There's one more angle. I can see it right here. Let's fix it. So it's going to be from that point to that point. There we go. And there's no more angles. Everything's like triangle or square. And we get this very nice little shape. So now we just uh, right click, shift, mirror, and this is going to be bounding box negative Z. And we're going to hit apply. And that's going to give us our nice little key. And we can even add like one extra support edge like down here. Huh, that's weird. Is it finding some sort of, seems like it's finding some sort of uh, edge loop or something or like angle. That's fine. We're just going to do this here, like a cut. And then we're just going to grab all of these guys and start bringing them in closer to the final element. And that's it. That's how we can create a very nice subdivision level key. That's going to look really low poly when we're in, in like normal mode. And then whenever we want, we just press three. And we're going to get a very nice smooth mode. Now, of course, if we have like a more complex shape, if we have more more stuff, you're going to have to uh, model up the little like things and stuff. But for this one, I, I just decided to go for a simple one because I don't want this this video to go super, super long. So if you like this little demo, guys, I'm pretty sure you guys are going to love the newest uh, hard surface course that we just released. So make sure to check the description down here. Make sure to, of course, leave a like, share, comments. Everything is welcome. Uh, remember, we are going to have our portfolio reviews this uh, weekend. So um, Saturday and Sunday, we have portfolio reviews. Make sure to check down here. The, the link to the portfolio is also going to be over there so that you can, uh, of course, share all of this stuff. So, yeah, hang on tight because I will see you back on the next one. Bye bye.